Hi everyone, I'm Daniel and today I'm going to introduce my computer setup that I have here at home. I'm going to show you this wonderful white screen that I'm using here since two years already, over two years. And I'm going to show you both computers that I'm using for all my video editing and photo editing. So stay tuned and enjoy this video. This screen is super nice for doing video editing, I promise you. You get a 38 inches of diagonal and it's a curved design. So it's super nice once you look at the screen, you kind of have the impression being in the screen since it's curved. And that's what I like about this one here. Three things I needed for my work. I wanted to have kind of the same colors like my MacBook does and that monitor gave me exactly the same colors. I needed a white screen to have the entire timeline from Final Cut down here. That was important and it shouldn't reflect too much. And that's exactly what that monitor offered me. Since I do have kind of a bright office here when the sun shines in, um, there are some reflections and I needed a monitor that is bright enough which doesn't reflect at the same time with internal sound speakers. That was important and that's what I got using the screen already for two years. The price didn't drop since it's probably a good product and many people are still asking for it. And now let's see what the backside offers. It was not much work to attach the stand to the monitor itself. There's only one button right here that you need to push down so you can remove the stand. And this one here is a standard mount. So you will be able, if you have a wall holder, to place that monitor on your wall and you can turn it then in all directions, which is super nice. You can vary the height quite easy. You need to push it down. And anytime you want the monitor to be up, just hold it slightly up and then it will hold. You can tilt the monitor in both directions, up and just slightly down. And from there on it will hold. The stand is made of aluminum, so it's kind of good quality and it doesn't feel cheap at all. Here at the back side you get for instance one HDMI port, a second HDMI port, which is useful since you can attach two computers at once and do a split screen. So you can for instance use a Windows computer on this side and a Mac on the other side, then you can split it in half and then you have Windows and Mac on both sides with a resolution of 1080p on this ultra wide screen, which is super nice. If you don't want to do that, nothing easier than that. Just use your computer, plug it into HDMI or use USB-C. You get two other ports which are USB 3.0. The only downside is once you connect the power adapter which is included by that monitor, it does not automatically supply these ports with electricity. I do have a lamp which is attached to this monitor as well. That is the BenQ Screen Bar Plus. And I tried to plug it into one of these ports and for some reason I couldn't get any electricity out of them. So you need to attach a USB port from your computer to one of these ports to get electricity out of them. So something that might be important to know is that this USB Type-C port at the backside of this LG Ultra Wide screen only delivers 60 watts. You can mirror the screen from your iPad, you can mirror the screen from your MacBook or Microsoft Surface. However, if you're using one of these bigger MacBooks like the 16 inch versions, they take about 70 to 140 watts. So they, you won't be able to charge the MacBook at the same time you're doing video editing or doing anything in Adobe Lightroom or Photoshop since these programs will take a lot of more power. You can charge the smaller MacBooks like the 13 or 14 inch and you can do video editing at the same time but for the bigger versions you need to attach the wall adapter from that computer to your computer otherwise you dampen your battery. Some of you guys were asking about the MacBook that I'm using for photo and video editing. It's the MacBook Pro 16 inch M1 Max 64 gigabytes of RAM and 4 terabyte of SSD. The MacBook I used before was the 2020 model having four USB Type-C ports, 
but unfortunately they don't have any SD slot and no HDMI slot anymore. There's no noise anymore when you do photo or video editing which is super nice and it runs a lot faster than the previous version. That's probably one of the best keyboards you can get for your Mac that is the Logitech MX keys which I made already a review of. There's a light sensor behind it, so anytime you get close to the keyboard, the lights will the, the keys will illuminate. The downside is I haven't figured out yet how to use these function keys, like the volume control, so as the brightness, in combination with my monitor. Otherwise, one of the best keyboards, like I said, since it has a really long battery time, you can couple multiple devices with one keyboard. For instance, you can set your iPhone right here, the iPad right here, Mac Studio or MacBook Pro on this one here. And the cool thing is, it's that's the normal Apple mouse with the lightning port here at the bottom. There's one controller down here. If you push that, you can do everything. You can go into the settings, change the language, change the automatic standby. You can set a different color tone all by using just one button down here. That's a typical example of how it may look like. Here's my new MacBook Pro, which I use now the HDMI port of, and that is my old MacBook Pro, of which I'm using now the USB Type-C port to mirror it here on this screen. Each computer has now a resolution of full HD. I'm using now one USB Type-C port to mirror the screen onto this one here, but it's only charging once I'm doing the basic stuff, like listening to music or searching through the internet. But if you do intense stuff like video editing or photo editing, it's not going to charge. That's why you require a second port to power up this MacBook. And that's a big downside since you only got two USB Type-C ports on the other side, which you can now use to attach any external device. And it does not have any SD slot. The big advantage using the newer versions of the MacBook Pros is that you get now a different adapter to charge it. You get the old one with the magnetic port and you still have a three USB type three ports and it's not charging while you use the HDMI port to mirror the screen. So guys, I hope you enjoyed watching this short tutorial about what I'm using here at home to do my photo and video editing. I will put the link to this monitor, the screen bar plus, the keyboard and the mouse into the video description below. So if you would like to support my channel, make sure to get it from there. If you do have any further questions, just leave a comment below. Make sure to follow me on Instagram and TikTok. See you very soon and tschüss.